Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with red beans and rice. That's right, it's almost Mardi Gras. And besides drinking daiquiris out of glasses the size of your leg or exposing yourself for some plastic beads, what better way to celebrate than by making this amazing classic Creole comfort food? And by the way, there's like 10,000 different ways you can make this recipe. And this just happens to be mine. And this video is going to start like so many often do by showing you the meat. And for this, I'm going to use two kinds. I'm going to use a smoked ham hock. Traditionally, this dish is made with the leftover bone from a ham, which was generally eaten on Sunday, and then Monday they would use the bone to make this. But since we don't have access to that, we'll go with a ham hock instead, which is going to provide pretty much the exact same flavor. And then besides our hock, we're also going to use a couple of andouille sausage, which is a sort of spicy pork sausage, and that's also lightly smoked. So that's going to work really good here. And what we're going to want to do is cube that up. So we'll cut those links in half, then we'll split those pieces lengthwise and cut those in half. And then we'll turn it and cut it into, I don't know, about half inch pieces. And you know our system. Nobody cares how big you cube your sausage, but pick a size and stick with it. So we'll cut that up. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to toss that into our soup pot with a little bit of vegetable oil on a medium heat. And what we'll do is we'll cook that for a few minutes so that it releases some of that amazing, flavorful andouille sausage oil. And that's what we'll use to cook our holy trinity. And don't worry, it's not as sacrilegious as it sounds. So we'll cook that sausage stirring on medium heat. All right, we really don't need to brown it, but those edges will start to get a little color. And more importantly, that fat's going to start to render out a little bit. So that's looking good right there. And at that point, like I said, we're going to introduce our holy trinity, which is this. It's a trio of aromatic vegetables, including onion, green pepper. You can use green bell. I'm going to use poblano, which I think have a little more interesting flavor, and celery. And then there in the background, you can see a little bit of garlic, which we'll add later. But for now, it's all about the trinity. So we'll go ahead and we'll add that to our pot. And what we want to do is cook these vegetables stirring until they soften up and those onions turn translucent. And that's going to take anywhere between 5 and 10 minutes. It really depends on how small you diced them up. Which reminds me, as you saw, we diced these pretty small. Ideally, in red beans and rice, you want your veggies to kind of disappear. Kind of just dissolve into the mixture. But anyway, like I said, we're going to cook that stirring on medium until those vegetables soften up and sweeten up and end up looking something like this. And then once that's happened, let's go ahead and add in our garlic. And as usual, we do not want to brown the garlic. We just want to sizzle it in that mixture for about a minute, at which point we will add the final flavorings, which are going to be very simple, by the way. This is definitely not one of those recipes you want to screw up with a lot of exotic ingredients, unless, of course, you consider bay leaf exotic, which in that case, you really need to get out more. So I'm going to toss in two big or three small bay leaves. We're also going to add some dry thyme, Sure, you can use fresh, of course, but I do prefer the flavor of dried here. We're also going to add a whole bunch of finely and freshly ground black pepper and way more than a pinch of cayenne. I'm going to put about a half teaspoon myself, but that's up to you. Don't make it too hot and blame me. And then it's time for the star of the show, the red beans. So we're going to put in one pound of red kidney beans. Those have been soaked overnight. Oh, you got to soak your beans overnight. But what if you forgot? Well, I got a shortcut for you on the blog post. So check that out. Of course, we need to add our smoked ham hock to the pot. And then last but not least, we need a couple quarts of liquid. I'm going to use cold, fresh water. But if you have some stock or broth around you want to use up, that would be beautiful. A little extra flavor never hurt anybody. And we'll give that a stir. And we will raise our heat to high because we need to bring this up to a simmer, which is going to take a little while. And while that's coming up to temperature, you may see some bean foam rise to the top, which is generally not a bad idea to skim off. And in case you're curious, I believe the official culinary term for that would be to deflatulate the top. So go ahead and feel free to skim as you see fit. And once that does come to a simmer, all we need to do is back the heat down to low to maintain a gentle but steady simmer. All right, so play with your heat until you have your mixture simmering something similar to this. And then the rest of this recipe is as easy as it is boring. Because all we're going to do is cook this on low, stirring occasionally for about three or four hours. Or until your beans are very, very soft and your meat is tender. There's really only one thing we need to do in the middle of this process, and that's add a little bit of salt. All right, I generally don't like to salt my beans at the beginning of the cooking process. So what I like to do roughly halfway through the cooking time, maybe at like the hour and a half mark, is add a nice big spoon of salt at that point, and then we'll just adjust later, okay? So if you want to add your salt at the beginning, go ahead. It probably doesn't make that big of a difference. So we'll stir that in, and we will continue to let this simmer gently on low until, like I said, our beans are absolutely and completely tender and soft. All right, my ham hock is kind of breaking apart. That's another great sign this is pretty much ready to eat. And at this point, you have a huge decision. At what texture do you want to serve your red beans? Many chefs will stop right here, 
and serve it just like this, where we have a lot of liquid and a lot of whole beans. But another method, which I prefer, is to continue cooking and stirring this. And while you are, you're kind of smashing some of the beans against the side of the pot with a spoon. Or you can even use a potato masher and kind of smush them against the bottom. And what that's going to do is kind of turn that thinner, soupier mixture into something very, very thick and creamy. So I continued cooking mine, smashing those beans, until I'd say roughly half the beans were smashed and half were still left whole. And as you can see, that really, really thickened up. All right, so both methods, extremely delicious. It really just depends on the viscosity you're going for. And then besides deciding how thick to make this, the only other thing you have to do is taste and adjust for seasoning. So please promise you're gonna taste this for salt. You may very well have to add a little more. And then once it's tasting and feeling exactly how you want it, we're gonna ladle that up into some warm bowls. And of course you have to serve this with some steamed rice. Otherwise you gotta change the name of the whole dish. So I pack some steamed rice in a buttered ramekin and I place that on top. And I should mention that traditionally the rice is put in the bowl first, but I decided to go food blogger on this and fancy it up a little bit. And then we'll finish this with a generous scattering of chopped green onions. And then last but not least, it's not red beans and rice unless there's a little hot sauce involved. So we'll go ahead and dot the top with the hot sauce of our choosing, which is not only going to taste great, but it does add a little visual distraction from the less than photogenic surface. I'll be the first to admit, red beans and rice is not the most attractive thing, but unlike the weather person on your local newscast, it doesn't have to be. So a little bit of hot sauce in that, red beans and rice, or at least our version of it, is done. I mean, if there was a Mount Rushmore of American comfort food, this has got to be up there. I mean, it's got to be right next to mac and cheese. By the way, that's a great question. What is on your Mount Rushmore of American comfort foods? But anyway, while you mull that over, let me grab a spoon and go in for the official taste. And right here, you can get a perfect look at my desired texture. Like I said, I probably mashed in about half those beans, which I think sticks to the rice a little better. But anyway, as we referenced earlier, just the epitome of comfort food. Just a beautiful combination of those rich, smoky meats, those stick-to-your-ribs beans, the aromatic vegetables. This is just a big old bowl of feeling good. And who doesn't like to feel good? All right? So I really do hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.